and they will have 90 seconds to do so. First question tonight. One of the biggest criticisms of Nashville in recent years has been the focus on downtown development at the expense of our neighborhoods. Each of you have said you will work to change that, but what specifically will you do to ensure things like sidewalks are a priority in every Nashville neighborhood? And we will begin with Alice. Well, thank you for having me here tonight, and uh, I'm delighted to receive that question first. Uh, the aspect I think that's most frustrating for Nashville residents about the way that our city operates is that frequently, um, instead of solving a problem, we're explained how there are 60 different departments that work separately. And so I think in terms of getting to a result of more sidewalks and more potholes filled and our tax rate under control, starts with thinking first of the residents who live here and how they interact with city government. That means making a customer-focused city government that begins first with thinking about how many feet can we lay in a day of sidewalks? What is the most cost-effective way to get that done? And how are we accountable to all of the neighborhoods in Nashville in a really transparent way? And so I'd like to continue to do that. Brady O'Connell. Roy, thanks. Um, this is... I understand Nashvilleians' frustrations and having represented the urban core, a couple things are true. We've done a very good job of making sure that downtown has the capacity to allow for investments in other parts of the city. We haven't always followed through on that promise, though, but some of what I'm going to do is continue fights that I've been engaged in already. Uh, recent Metro Capital Spending Plan, we had uh, $15 million proposed for a private parking deck at the Nashville Zoo. Well, our family loves the Nashville Zoo. We've been members for years, uh, but it's one of the most dangerous corridors in the city, and our only public investment on that corridor was to invite more cars into it, but no considerations for pedestrians. Uh, the Caldwell Abbey Hall neighborhood just around the corner bills itself as the zoo neighborhood, but families in the zoo neighborhood can't walk to the zoo. So I fought for $12 million to be redirected into Vision Zero investments and transit centers that will allow for better crosstown capacity because just a few years ago you couldn't even walk from Millensville to the zoo. Uh, meanwhile, I will say fighting with colleagues, district council members often know what their communities want but have a hard time uh, working with them to get it. I'm very pr proud that uh, Councilmember Hager uh, got his community center funded in Old Hickory. Councilmember Roten got finally a park at Ravenwood. It's very, very important. Councilmember Sepulveda has fought to get Mariposa Park just named uh, out in her council district. And I think it's really important to make sure that we're listening to the communities and investing all over the city in our 500 square miles. Thank you. Heidi Campbell. This question speaks to the tagline of my campaign, which is, are we building a city to visit or a city to live in? And the answer, of course, is both. But we have been focused too long in Nashville on downtown and tourism and not on people who live here. And as somebody who grew up in Nashville, I feel this very deeply when I've seen, you know, downtown grow so rapidly. But Nashvilleians are struggling right now to be able to even live here. We're getting priced out of the city. And we have sidewalks that go to nowhere while, you know, downtown has really been um, built up more. So I know that this is really the question of this race. This is the question of the moment. And we need somebody who has municipal experience but can also work with the state on these issues because the fact of the matter is is that we need to be able to fund some of these things. And um, and we just passed the largest big transportation bill in the history of our state. I serve on the Transportation Committee in the Senate. And so we actually have some money that we can put into multimodal connectivity and making things better for people who live here. And that's definitely the focus, um, what I want to focus on as your mayor. Matt Wilcher. So, Rory, thank you, and David for moderating this, and Dr. Harris and the folks at ABC, thank you so much for having us here today, and to the League of Women Voters and Channel 5, thank you for giving this, us this opportunity to talk about the critical issues facing our city. It is appropriate that we open with this question at this location, because for far too often, there has been insufficient infrastructure invested in sidewalks, in stormwater, in sewers, in areas that have been neglected, neighborhoods that have been neglected for far too long. Downtown has received a lot of investment. It is time for that investment to be realized across the city. When I launched my campaign, I've talked about three things, public safety, public education, and quality of life. 
Public education is something that touches communities across the county. Every school in every neighborhood should be a great public school. That comes with investment. That comes by prioritizing our children first and making sure that they have sidewalks to be able to get to school without having to walk through traffic. It means that we need to have neighborhoods where there is affordable housing that your kids and grandkids can actually afford to live and grow their families in. And that's what I will prioritize as mayor. It comes with being intentional about what we're trying to do. And I am committed to making sure that every neighborhood and every community across Nashville realizes the same benefits that downtown has had. Thank you. Sharon Hurt. Thank you so very much. And I appreciate being here with you all and uh, Dr. Harris and the American Baptist College family. And I also want to recognize Senator Gilmore for her presence and being here. Um, I think that what we have to do is change the way we operate in Nashville. I think we need to start with a citizen-centric model as opposed to it being a government-centric model. Because if we think about the citizens first, that means we're putting people first and making people our priority. And that's something that we have not done. I think that for our school kids, as uh, my colleague here said, to have to walk on the road of Ewan Lane when they are going to school. And it is just absurd to me that we've not done more in order to make sure that, that the public safety of our kids are our first priority. I think that we have to use some top quality, a total quality management, where we go from the bottom up as opposed to the top down in our government and start right there at the grassroots. The root of it gives you the fruit of it. If you find out what's there, and if we put what is there at the root, which I believe must begin with love, loving our children, we take care of them first. Thank you. Jim Ginger. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful to be here. It is a great question. At this point, we've knocked on thousands of doors across Nashville, and we hear that concern through every neighborhood. Uh, the fact is we've been growing as a city, but without a plan. And that has caused a series of these pain points, whether or not it is the absence of investment in infrastructure, neighborhoods that now flood that never used to flood, the, the, the congestion that we all feel. The strange thing is, is that we have talked about all of those issues for at least a decade. Many of the folks up here on the stage, in fact, have been part of Metro government or part of been politicians, and we still have those issues. And we're past the point of being able to talk about them. The only thing that's different than a decade ago when we were talking about it is that we are now spending 70% more in our city government than we were spending 10 years ago. So the question for you all in the audience is who is actually going to have the courage and the know-how to take on these types of problems? I grew up in a business environment where you were rewarded for delivering results. And who has the capability to actually modernize our metro government so it is more effective and more efficient than what is happening today? You should not be in a situation where you are paying more and getting less. Let's start to grow the city, but with a purpose and a plan. Thank you. Vivian Wilborn. Good evening. Dr. Harris, News Channel 5, League of Women Voters, Ori, ho, 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 and News Channel 5, Worry and David, thank you for having us for our third, um, um, our third uh, televised debate. Excited about being here. Let's just say this. When I started this campaign, the two platform that I have used, that is what we need today is that we must make have stronger neighborhoods and we must have stronger businesses. For so long, we have looked at those two entities as being competing, and they should have never been. When I served on a Metro Council, we were made to think that if you were for neighborhoods, you couldn't be for businesses. When you were for businesses, you couldn't be for neighborhoods. And that was unfortunate because we deserve both. We should have both. And because of the petty politics that was played, that was played we were kicking the can down the road for sidewalks and for infrastructure and causing the parity that was happening in this city to grow further apart. Economic parity is important. 
We have neighborhoods that live in the same tax district, but they don't get the same services. You compare Bordeaux to Belmont Houston. Bordeaux does not have the services that Belmont Houston has, but they say pay the same tax rate. And let's be clear, it's not just because of the petty politics, it's about choices. So you have to be more than, in, more than be intentional. You must be courageous. And as mayor, I will be courageous and do what is right, closing that gap. Thank Jeff you. Uh, thank you, and thanks for having us tonight. Uh, for too many people in too many parts of the city, it feels like growth is happening to them and not for them. And I think that the question gets at this sort of uh, pervasive notion that downtown and in, in Freddie's district gets all of the love and all the focus and all the attention and that the rest of the county gets ignored. But I think that, that that somehow misses really what the point is. I don't think that most people in Nashville want us to pit downtown against the rest of the county. I don't think that they want us, that Nashvilleians want to neglect downtown. I think they want to see the same level of strategic planning and coherence and investment in Bellevue and Antioch and Madison and Donaldson that we see on these bigger projects downtown, and I think that's what we're missing. Uh, my favorite question that I've been asked during this campaign, you know, I asked what do you need from the next mayor? And a woman in Madison just said, I just want to be able to, to go for a walk without having to drive somewhere first. And I think that that gets at the core of what we're not actually providing in terms of quality of life to residents, and we should be much more strategic in doing so. We don't need to build the sidewalks to nowhere. We don't need to have sort of bits and pieces. We need to be much more strategic in thinking through where do we need sidewalks so that people can get you know, from here to there safely to access transit, to walk their children to school. And I think if we actually have real planning that reaches out and partners with communities, we can turn that around.